Maya's graph editor is easily one of the most confusing parts of the animation process when you first get started. All of these tangled curves and data points are really kind of hard to interpret. So in this video series, we're going to talk about the graph editor and how to demystify it a little bit. We're going to do this by starting to look at some data and how that is interpreted in graph form. So the information we're going to be using is from the World Bank website. And what we're going to focus on is some data about the unemployment rate from 1991 to 2017. So just by glancing at this spreadsheet, you can tell that there's a whole lot of different numbers in here that are all over the place. And if we just look at this, it means nothing to us. The best way to understand some of this data is to start graphing it out. This data is for the unemployment rate of people in the eligible workforce from the years 1991 to the years 2017, and it's broken up by country. So if we graph out some of the numbers for the United States, you'll see that we get this graph. Now, I only graphed out three data points, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But first, let's interpret this graph. The value up and down represents the percentage of people who were unemployed. The value from side to side represents the date from which that data point was obtained. So, if I start at the beginning, around 1991, and I go up, you would see it was getting close to 7% unemployment rate. And if you were to look at this graph, we have three data points. We have one 1991, one in 2001, and one in 2017. And if you were to just use those three data points, it would tell a really interesting story. It appears our unemployment rate declined pretty steadily from 1991 to 2017. However, that's because we're skipping 16 years of data points between 2001 and 2017. So what if we pulled a couple more of those numbers out of that, out of that data and graphed that? What if we graphed this many data points? Well, now it's telling a little bit of a different picture, right? We can see that as we move forward in time from 1991 to about 2006, unemployment seemed to roughly be declining. And then suddenly there was a sharp increase in unemployment and then a decrease in unemployment till now. So this is actually a little more accurate because as many of you may know, there was a recession around 2007 that caused unemployment to rise. But again, we've only taken data points from about six or seven dates throughout history. So what if we looked at the data points for every year from 1991 to 2017? If we look at that, we see much more detailed information about what was happening with the unemployment rate over that time. Most of you have probably been looking at graphs in different classes for a long time now, and you can interpret this pretty clearly. Something happened in 2007 that caused the unemployment rate to go up. It was the subprime banking crisis, and that caused the unemployment to rise to almost 10% and then slowly the economy started to recover. So this data, this graph, has given us enough information to understand what happened year to year, and this is much different than that first graph we saw. So the first step in understanding a graph, of course, is understanding what this graph is trying to communicate to us. It's trying to communicate to us the unemployment rate in percentages, over time. Our brains are very visual, so once we understand what this data represents, this line tells us a story. Now, our brains are also capable of handling a little bit more than one piece of information at a time. For example, if we were to graph out the unemployment rate for the US, Canada, and China, we would get this. And you'll see pretty quickly that the US and Canada had a very similar unemployment rate, but China's seemed to be following a different pattern altogether. The impressive part of that is that by just glancing at this data, 
we're actually interpreting 26 different data points for three different countries each. So this graph is actually showing us 78 different data points, and we're able to comprehend those data points in order to interpret them. However, we can have too much data. If we were to graph out 13 different countries and their unemployment rates, although we will see some interesting things about this graph, it's really not communicating anything meaningful to us because it's data overload. This is one of the problems that most people end up having with the graph editor in Maya. They open up the graph editor and they see a whole bunch of squiggly lines and it feels overwhelming to try to interpret those lines. The way we remedy this issue is to focus on the data one curve at a time.